What's going on everybody? Tom here with Black Sheep Keto and welcome to another recipe video just for you subscribers out there. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please consider doing so. Now today is going to be another installation in our ketogenic holiday treat series. And this one was requested to us by Ben, or as you guys might know him, Primal Bro. And what he wanted was a keto gingerbread cookie. So that is exactly what we're gonna be making today. We're gonna be making a nice crispy keto gingerbread cookie that you guys can actually frost and make awesome gingerbread men or gingerbread houses. And to do that, you will need the royal icing, which I'm also gonna make, and I will put a link down in the description. But this is just for the gingerbread cookies. Now, if that sounds good to you guys, hang on tight, and I will show you how to make it. All right, everybody, welcome to the recipe. Now laid out in front of us here, we have all of our dry ingredients for the keto gingerbread cookies. So first, let's go through all of our ingredients here. Now in this bowl here, I have one and one quarter cup of fine almond flour. Right here, we have one teaspoon of xanthan gum. In this one, I have a half a teaspoon of baking powder and one quarter teaspoon of baking soda. Right here, we have about an eighth of a teaspoon of pink salt. You can either use half of a quarter teaspoon or just a pinch of it'll do, but this is actually one eighth of a teaspoon of pink salt. Right here, we have one teaspoon of ground ginger. Now you can use the fresh stuff if you have a zester, but for most people, ground is gonna taste close enough and you probably have it on hand already. Right here, we have a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon and lastly, one eighth teaspoon of ground cloves. Again, use half of a quarter teaspoon if you don't have an eighth teaspoon. And all we're gonna do is combine all of these in this glass bowl here and give them a whisk to make it well combined and uh, break up any clumps that might form from the almond flour. So let's get going on that. So we'll dump in our almond flour, then our xanthan gum, the leavening agents, salt, ginger, cinnamon, and finally our cloves. And then I'm just gonna use like a hand whisk here just to again, stir this in, break up all the clumps and make sure it's pretty well combined before moving on to our next step. Now that looks pretty good to me and guys, it already smells like a gingerbread cookie. It's absolutely amazing. So we're gonna set this aside and move on to our wet ingredients. All right, everybody, we are back here with the wet ingredients and I am gonna step through them. But as a note, you will see my KitchenAid stand mixer right here. I'm using this instead of a hand mixer because um, the KitchenAid is a lot quieter and that hand mixer gets a little bit loud on camera. So uh, I am using this, but if you just have a hand mixer, it's gonna work just fine. This is just for the audio purposes. So to step through our wet ingredients here, we have two tablespoons of softened and or melted butter. I wanted to soften it. I put it in the microwave a little too long, but you know what? It's still gonna work out just fine. We've got a quarter cup of the granulated Lakanto. This is a monk fruit and erythritol blend. We have a quarter cup packed of Swerve's brown sugar replacement. We've got ourselves one teaspoon of vanilla extract and one egg. And all these are really just gonna get put in the mixer and combined. So let's do that. Dump in our butter, our granulated Lakanto, the brown sugar, the vanilla, and our egg. Now, as I mentioned, every time we use this brown sugar stuff, it really does like to clump. So we are gonna go ahead and use this kind of whiskey attachment as opposed to the paddle for at least mixing the wet ingredients. Then we'll change over to the paddle for the dry. But just make sure you break up all those clumps of brown sugar because you don't want those in your finished cookie. All right, guys, I went ahead and upped the brightness on the camera just a little bit so that you could see into this bowl here. And you can see we pretty much have no clumps left. So now it's gonna be time to add our dry ingredients directly into the wet. So I like to do this in two parts. So add half of it, mix it a bit, add the other half. So let's go ahead and do that. Looks like about half and we'll go ahead and get it mixing. You probably will need to get in here with a rubber scraper at some point, whether using a KitchenAid or just a standard hand mixer, just scrape the edges as needed. Now that looks pretty well combined, so we're gonna add the other half of our dry ingredients and mix this until it is all well combined. All right guys, as you can see, our dough is now forming a ball in the center of our KitchenAid or with your hand mixer. So now it's time to go ahead and get this out. So I'm actually just gonna pile it onto a piece of saran wrap real quick and then I'll explain the next step. 
All right, guys, I have my dough here that I went ahead and pulled out of the bowl. And um, it's sitting on a single sheet of cling wrap. And I'm just going to wrap it up in here. And we're going to leave it sit for about 20 minutes. Now, the reason for this is you want the liquids in the dough to kind of evenly distribute amongst there. That way it doesn't fall apart when you're rolling it. So we're going to leave this just sitting here on this uh, cutting board for about 20 minutes. And in the meantime, preheat your oven to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, everybody, it has been about 20 minutes and you can see actually just visibly the dough looks a little bit shinier and that's exactly what you're uh, going for here. So we're gonna go ahead and unwrap it, but save this plastic wrap because you can use it to help you out in the next step. Yeah, definitely a lot shinier. You can feel kind of the fat's been pulled a little bit to the surface and that's exactly what we were aiming for. Now, before we start rolling this out, we are gonna want to just get a little bit of almond flour on our cutting board here, just so it doesn't stick. You could do this on your countertop as well, but I'm just using my butcher board. Doesn't need to be a lot, just a little bit like that. And we're gonna go ahead and set this down and start rolling it out. Now to make this a little bit easier on myself, I'm actually just gonna break this in half to start with. And we'll roll out half at a time just because I'm limited on space here. So we'll get this down here and start rolling it. Now with your uh, saran wrap, if you want this to be a little bit easier or if you have like a wooden rolling pin, go ahead and just put your saran wrap over the top like so and then roll on top of it. I happen to have a silicone coated rolling pin, so I am not gonna do that. But if you don't, that works really well. All right guys, this is rolled to about 1 8 of an inch thick. It will increase in size by about 50% when you cook it. But now it is time to actually cut our shapes out. Now I've got some gingerbread man and various other Christmas decorations that I'm gonna be using. But if you don't have other cookie cutters, a lid from a jar works really well. Um, so just go ahead and start in a corner, push down, give it a little shake, and then remove. And these can be actually decorated to look like Christmas ornaments or basically whatever you want. Now this is gonna make you between 10 and 12 cookies depending on the size. Obviously something like this gingerbread man is gonna use a lot more dough than something like this candy cane, but it should be 10 to 12 cookies roughly for the entire batch. All right, everybody, you can see all of the gingerbread cookies that we made right here. And obviously I like gingerbread men cause there's like four of them plus some babies, but ultimately we did get 13 cookies out of this. So it really just depends on the time. Now to bake these things, we're going to put them in a 275 degree Fahrenheit oven for between 20 and 22 minutes. These little guys might actually only take about 18, but when the edges start to brown and you see them kind of have like a nice flat texture, they're ready to take out. So I'm gonna go get these in my oven. Now in the meantime, we are gonna make some royal icing for this. And I decided to do that as a separate recipe. So I will put a link in the card to make the royal icing that we're gonna decorate these delicious gingerbread men with. Now real quick, you may be wondering why we're doing 275 for like 20 minutes instead of like 375 for like 10 or whatever you can imagine. Um, almond flour tends to burn a lot easier than other flours. So we need to drop that temperature and cook them longer to have that same kind of crispy gingerbread texture that you're expecting without the bottoms turning into that nasty burnt almond flour taste. So that is why we do that. Anyway, my cookies are in the oven. I'm gonna get some royal icing made, so make sure you check out that video and we'll be back once the cookies are out of the oven. All right, everybody, here are the finished cookies as we pulled them out of the oven. Now, you'll notice that they are, are gonna be a little bit soft right now, and that's just because, as with all keto baked goods, they don't fully harden until they cool. So leave these on your cookie sheet for 20, 30 minutes, or give them about 10 minutes and transfer them to a uh, cooling rack, whatever you wanna do. But in the meantime, I have one of our uh, test cookies from last night. Now, this one I did roll a bit thinner than the ones on this plate here, um, but I just wanna show you guys the texture that this is gonna give you. So real quick here, like if I break it, you see it's got a nice little snap to it. Um, you can see pretty well there, hopefully. Let me adjust the zoom. The kind of texture that we're looking at inside there. And again, like, you know, they do have the gingerbread feel to it. This has been left out overnight to harden up just a little bit, but within 20 to 30 minutes, these should be pretty firm and you obviously want them to be completely cool before you decorate it. So we're gonna let these cool, get them decorated and then go ahead and do the taste test. But first, why don't you guys check out the finished product. And now that you guys have seen the recipe and the finished product, it is time for the taste test. So as you can see here, we have our awesome gingerbread man and I did decorate him guys, he is super cute. What do you think? I should be on the Food Network, this guy is so cute. Okay, maybe it's horrible and if you want a good laugh, go ahead and check out that royal icing video that I'm gonna put down in the description and I'll show you all the terrible creations that we made. I'm not a professional, somewhere some cookie decorator just probably rolled over and like died, but that is okay, this guy is super awesome and I think it's gonna taste delicious. So with that guys, I'm gonna give it a taste. Should we start with this head or like an arm? I'm thinking an arm. All right guys, now let's talk about the cookie. 
As you bite into it, it has a nice snap to it. And as your teeth sink in, it crumbles, but it's not crummy, if you get what I'm trying to say there. Then let's talk about the flavor a little bit. Now, obviously it's a gingerbread cookie, so you want that ginger to really come through. There's a little bit of a hint of those cloves, a little bit of that cinnamon that comes through, and I think that makes a fantastic gingerbread cookie. It tastes just like one, and I think we really nailed the texture as well. And of course, if you are gonna decorate them, and hopefully you do a much better job than I do, you have that frosting on there. It actually is more of a glaze, almost like an icing than a frosting, which obviously makes sense because it is an icing, but it doesn't have a lot of softness to it. When it hardens, it's kind of crispy and it coats the cookie really well. And obviously icings are sweet. So it just gives you that really nice sweet flavor. So if you guys are interested in that icing recipe or the gingerbread cookie or the macros for this recipe, all of that information is going to be down in the description below. You just click that see more button. I'll have links to all the recipes and the macros right down there. With that guys, I'm gonna go ahead and close the video. If you like this video, leave it a like. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section. And if you have not subscribed yet, do me a huge favor guys, hit that subscribe button, show us some love, and I will see you in the next one.